So Windows versus Mac, Finder versus File Explorer, window buttons on the top left versus the top right. All of these are part of a bigger debate between Windows and Mac. Many people have only ever used Windows and would never even consider a Mac, or they're diehard Mac users who haven't tried Windows in a decade. Well, a lot has changed. Windows owns nearly 70% of the market, but that number is changing as Mac OS has doubled its share in just the past decade. So which is actually the better operating system? I wanted to dig a little bit deeper. So in this video, I'm breaking this down into eight different categories. Let's get started with the first category, which of course is the hardware. Now, Windows has the advantage here, having a larger selection because although Microsoft does make Surface laptops, anyone can make a PC. HP, Dell, Lenovo, Asus, the list goes on and on. Tons of manufacturers means a lot of competition and a lot of variety, where Mac devices, on the other hand, are only made by Apple. You could name all of the Mac models in about a minute. So that means Windows could be either cheaper or more expensive. They can be built and maintained and upgraded if you want to do it yourself, and the flexibility with Windows allows you to find different laptops with different keyboards. You can choose the screen quality and refresh rate. You could choose a laptop with the ports that you want on the side of it. There's different form factors, there's different strengths and weaknesses, and different brands, like I said, that are competing on price, giving you a pretty good value on performance. And of course, Windows has something that Apple still hasn't introduced, which is touch screens on laptops. Sometimes they can double as a tablet if you fold it back. Other times it's just an extra touch input. Some also allow pens so you could draw or sign documents. And with the Mac, I need to use an iPad for that. But Mac hardware is pretty solid. They typically last a really long time. And because it's a small SKU, like Apple just makes a couple laptops, they have to make sure they're really good laptops. They have good displays, good speakers, excellent webcams, and they're tried and true devices that work reliably and last a really long time. So still, I need to give the win in this category to Windows. Options, pricing, and competition make Windows hardware superior for desktops especially, although I still think that MacBook hardware is the superior laptop format for me personally, and I do see many other competitors copying MacBooks and their design. But moving on to category number two, this is the user experience, which is a little bit of a rough start here for Windows because one of my biggest complaints with Windows in general is related to the user experience. And this depends on which brand you buy from, but no matter what Windows laptop I've ever used, I always see pop-ups on the corner that are always trying to upsell you on Norton Antivirus or Xbox or OneDrive or Microsoft 365. Like all these different things are always popping up and trying to get you to subscribe. And I know that each brand is going to have their own bloatware. It doesn't feel like a very premium experience unless you go in and unsubscribe from all these and disable notifications. Now, there's a lot of bloatware on Windows laptops, but Apple's not without its bloatware either. They'll come with things like GarageBand and all this other stuff that you may never use, but at the same time, you aren't getting nearly as many pop-ups. And if you are getting notifications, they're far less intrusive than the large one in the bottom right corner that Windows always gives you. With Apple, kind of the main one is just gonna be iCloud. As far as the UI design goes on both of them, this one's gonna be a personal preference. I think these are both really quite clean now. I like the way Windows is set up. I like the way Mac is set up. So again, just gonna be a personal preference. Personally, I find that I like I can move the taskbar anywhere I want on Mac. So I put it on the left side, it disappears when I'm not using it. And that way I can focus on an entire window and I just have like a little banner in the very top that tells me the time and some settings related to that software. Another thing to consider is Siri versus Copilot. Just kidding. But what we do have on Mac versus Windows is going to be a difference in how you take things like screenshots, screen recordings, audio recordings. In Windows, you've got the snipping tool and a lot of it is in specific applications. Whereas on Mac, it's just kind of a, a quick hotkey shortcut of Command Shift 4 to open a screenshot or select certain parts of your screen. And it does take some learning to get used to what those actually are when you first switch to Mac. And a little complaint with Mac is that it can be pretty inconsistent with some things. Specifically, I noticed zooming in and out between different applications. Sometimes it's option and scroll. Sometimes it's control and scroll. Sometimes scrolling doesn't do anything and it's just command plus or command minus. I'm sure there are plenty of inconsistencies in Windows as well, but that's one that I've noticed particularly with Mac. But at least in the most recent several versions of Mac, we have window snapping, so you can snap left and right. Honestly, I didn't even notice when this came out. I think it was with Sequoia, but I mean, I use Magnet on there anyway, so it's just a software that can do that for me. Still, 
It's nice that we finally have that on Mac, but there is a way to fix that inconsistency. And honestly, also just to make my work more productive, regardless of whether you're using Windows or Mac, I would recommend getting this device right here. This is the Framer Creator Micro from the sponsor of today's video. The Framer Creator Micro is a compact and powerful device with 13 mechanical keys, a 2D joystick with seven custom actions, and a rotary dial, plus a touch sensor to toggle between configurations, but the configurations can also change based on the software you're using. The buttons are all customizable and can act as a simple keystroke or a long complex string of keys. I use this when I'm editing videos, for example, and each button is programmed for common actions like control Z to undo or even longer strings of keystrokes all programmed into one button on this macro pad. The best part is you can customize these configurations based on the application you're using. So I have a specific configuration that is automatically enabled when I open Adobe Premiere Pro. The RGB lights look really cool and the build quality is quite premium on this. The keys are replaceable with whatever icons you like and this comes with 31 icons and 14 solid color keys. Lastly, you can connect this by Bluetooth or USB-C and it's kind of just a slick device that really speeds up my workflow and honestly, I've only scratched the surface on what this can actually do. It's extremely flexible, very powerful, and is also one of my favorite looking desk accessories. To learn more about this, check out the link in the description down below. Now, getting back to the next category. Windows, this is almost ironic, Windows has face unlock, while Mac has either fingerprint or no biometrics at all. It's kind of like the opposite of, you know, iPhones have only face unlock and Android oftentimes only has fingerprint unlock. So. It's interesting how they have their own philosophies on that, but nonetheless, I do think face unlock is a little bit quicker. It's nice you just look at your laptop and you can log in. So obviously Windows versus Mac, one of the main differences is going to be the processors. Apple, of course, has their M series. The M4 is quite a bit ahead of Intel chips if you care about battery and performance. Like if you want that combo, but I have to say Snapdragon is definitely making some quick progress. They announced their Snapdragon X Elite Gen 2, which is coming in early 2026. And when that comes out, we'll see how that actually competes with the M series laptops. But if you're looking for a laptop or you need a silent machine, the M4 Max MacBook Pro not only beats a lot of what else is on the market, but also does so while having incredible battery efficiency. On the other hand, if you need maximum performance, no matter what, like you're plugged into a wall, Technically, you could still achieve better performance with a Windows desktop if you install something like a 96 core AMD Threadripper. Like there's just options you have that can get, you know, 96 cores is not something you're gonna see in a MacBook Air, for example. So for processor, I think Apple wins unless you're building a custom PC. This is kind of an experience one, but I think it's important enough to have its own category. And this is File Explorer versus Finder. This is something that's so central to your experience on either of these devices. And it's just how you manage files and the way the whole thing really sets up. So in Mac, you can preview audio in Finder or video just by clicking the play button without actually opening the file, which is kind of nice if you're trying to figure out like, what is that audio file that I have? Also searching with Mac has improved, but Windows is still better in my opinion. In Mac, you also need to change a bunch of settings just to get it to show you what Windows already shows you by default, like how much storage is in certain folders or what the file path is. Windows very clearly uses a tree and shows you the file path as you go through. You can copy and paste the file path to easily get where you need to go. Whereas Finder sort of hides the file path from you. It's more so like tag and search. You, even if you add the file path on the bottom with settings, you can like click and drag that over, but you can never copy and paste the file path. But Mac Finder does allow you to color code things. I almost never do that, but it's there if you want it. The winner in this category, in my opinion, without a doubt, is Windows. But the next one probably won't be the same case. This is longevity. Windows inevitably runs into issues and you end up spending 30 minutes watching a YouTube video with a 20 step process that has you go into the PowerShell or command line and that experience is far more rare in Mac from my experience. Windows also does update, I mean, technically it's a similar frequency to Mac, but it seems to be absolutely all the time. I swear it's every time I log into my Windows laptop, it'll just have two updates available. And if you ignore the update for too long, it forces a restart on you. Whereas with Mac, you can kind of just mute the notifications and update it every few months. Some people update once a year and you don't really notice the same number of update related issues if you postpone your updates with Mac versus with Windows. Obviously you should stay up to date, but I mean, not everyone has time to just, when you log on, sit there and wait 15 minutes for it to update. 
all the time. I know I'm gonna get some heat for that in the comments, but let me know if anyone else has a similar feeling or experience. Also, I have a 2020 Intel iMac. We're talking about longevity here. This thing still runs beautifully. It doesn't even have the M series chip. This is Intel, like I said, and I've never actually had a Windows machine for more than four years. No matter how well I take care of them, they always seem to break or they die or something happens. Is this an anecdote? Yes, absolutely. Some people have Windows machines that last a very long time, but I think this is a fairly common story. For example, all my roommates in college all bought Windows laptops the same time, and all of our Windows laptops died senior year of college. Our one roommate, freshman year, so this was like 2014, bought a MacBook Air, and he is still using it today. It's incredibly slow, and I don't know why he's still using it, but technically it still functions, and he's able to use it. So the winner for longevity really has to be Mac, especially in the realm of laptops. But stability, this is an interesting one. How stable are these two things? Obviously, you're not gonna have nearly as many crashes now as you would have like a decade ago, but Mac has fewer models, which make it easier to program for. Windows, on the other hand, has thousands of permutations, tons of options with displays, GPUs, CPUs, everything else involved. And so with that, you just have more variables and a higher risk of something going wrong there. So this was actually the reason I bought my first iMac back in 2020. I had an HP Spectre. It was like a $1,400 laptop. It was pretty high end. It was editing video as well. And then Adobe just pushed out an update that suddenly made it completely incompatible with my one year old laptop. So stability is a big win for Mac. But let's talk about other software and compatibility because I mean, maybe it's easier to make something for a Mac, but Windows has a huge share of the market. So it's no surprise that they do get preferential treatment on a lot of software. For example, niche software for businesses or education sometimes are only available on Windows, which is why a lot of college students are told you should buy a Windows laptop because the software you need may not be available on Mac. Now, I've never had issues with that personally, but it definitely is a very real thing. So before deciding on either one of these, be sure to look up what software you really need and see if it's available. So software availability is a win for Windows, but tying in with that, the next category is gaming, which is obviously just a different type of software here, but despite the impressive power of the M3 and M4 chips on Mac, gaming is still considered significantly inferior to Windows. There's a couple reasons for this. Mainly Windows has better anti-cheat, which is why many games are simply not available on Mac. And since like 95% of the gaming market uses Windows to play games, developers have almost no incentive to build for Mac. Again, leading to fewer game options on Mac. And Windows also has a better price to performance ratio, making it a better option for anyone who's specifically buying a machine to play games. So for gaming, it's not even like the winner's Windows, it's kind of the only option for most people. But let's get into the ecosystem. This is something that Apple really spends a lot of time focusing on. AirDrop is far superior to QuickShare for me, much more reliable, although QuickShare technically can be faster. It just never really shows up. Like devices aren't discoverable as much as they should be. It's a lot buggier. People don't use it as much as you'd expect because it's just not that convenient. Same thing with connecting Bluetooth devices. It's just easier to do on Mac if you open up your AirPods, it pops up, you connect. I know Windows has a way to quick connect a lot of earbuds, but it's kind of a weird clunky pop-up in the corner. You can sign into Mac with an Apple Watch. Mac has continuity camera, meaning your iPhone can act as your webcam. You have sidecar and extended display options with an iPad, and all of these have some counter version on Windows, but the continuity cross devices for Mac is really just a lot better. We also have iMessage, Find My, and FaceTime, very well connected on them. But Windows and Android, if you're in that ecosystem, has a lot of interesting things that are actually just available on browser. So Google Messages is accessible through your browser. Google Maps, you can find your friends on there. Find My Device on browser. Google Meet, also on browser. Everything you need, you can access on a browser, which means if you have an Android phone, as I do, you can still use a MacBook and easily get all of that stuff there. Similarly, I also have an iPhone and using an iPhone with a Windows laptop is significantly harder than using Android with Mac. Not because Mac is friendly, but because Android is more friendly with that kind of stuff. But I have to say this app called Local Send, again, not sponsored, totally free to use. This is a total game changer for me. Uh, I think, yeah, Local Send is what it's called. You can download it for like a Mac, Windows, Android, iOS, whatever. And it's a really great way to kind of act like AirDrop between different devices. So I use that all the time. I recommend checking it out if you have 
cross ecosystem devices. But in general, wrapping that ecosystem idea up, Mac has a tight ecosystem that acts as a, a walled garden for sure, but Windows plays nicely with everyone. The winner here, I mean, I have to say Mac because it does execute things really well. AirDrop works well, Find My works well, FaceTime works much better, but I wish they were a little bit more open like Windows, so you could use an iPhone and a Windows laptop, as many people do. Now, before I get into the conclusion, I wanna mention, should I compare these to Chromebooks or to Linux? I know there's gonna be a lot in the comments. People are like, oh, this is great, but like, what about Chromebooks or what about Linux, you know? I've used them and I would love to make a video about those. Leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know exactly which Linux I should compare to. But overall with these, Mac is a reliable, hands-off approach that has very little that could go wrong. They require minimal maintenance and they don't disappoint, they don't frustrate often, and the M4 chips also offer maximum performance and maximum energy efficiency. The machines are well built and very well designed in my opinion. On the other hand, Windows does a lot of things right and it's the main option, if not the only option, for many people out there. But personally, I have a strong preference for Mac. Not because I'm an Apple fanboy, trust me, my bubbles are green as I just showed you, but because Mac, for me, is more reliable, it lasts longer, it runs better on laptops, and that's a huge one, and has a very well-executed ecosystem while having far fewer pop-up ads. My conclusion here is this. Unless you're looking for specific different hardware, my preference with laptops is a MacBook. I think iMac is probably better for anyone who wants a no-frills machine and just wants to focus on work or is not technically inclined, whereas Windows is the superior option for businesses who need niche software or if you play games, obviously, or if you want to build and periodically upgrade a custom PC. All of those would be better for Windows. So be sure to head down to the comments. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of debating down there. Let the flame wars begin, and I'm excited to hear which one you like better.